Hello everyone, welcome back to our video class here at CSEC Maths Tutor. We're looking at another topic in consumer arithmetic and in this lesson it is depreciation. We have three objectives. One, to define the term depreciation. Two, to calculate depreciation using the linear method. And three, to calculate depreciation using the reducing balance method. So, what exactly is depreciation? Depreciation is an accounting term that refers to the loss in value of an item over time. Um, and that is with normal use. Now, let's talk a little bit about what we mean by with normal use. Normal use suggests that when you buy a product, you use it in the way that the manufacturer intended. And that is in a way that will not void your warranty. That's what we mean by normal use. Now, some products, some things like electronics and machinery, have what we call a usable lifetime. That is, it is not meant to last forever. It will break down at some point and will not be able to function at some point. And so depreciation is that term that refers to the, to the loss in value of those items that have a usable lifetime with normal use. Depreciation is used to give or predict or calculate the future price of assets. Now, why is this important? Um, the asset price may be needed by loss adjusters for insurance purposes, or it may be needed to file tax returns, or it may be needed to determine if the assets that you own, the car, the fridge, the TV, if you can use those as collateral for loans. Now, there are some things that do not depreciate, do not depreciate in value. Those things are, for example, land, um, art, for example, those things do not depreciate in value. And then you know that there are some things that depreciate in value, such as electronics, such as machinery. Depreciation is calculated using generally two methods, the straight line method and some other methods that are based on the reducing balance. All right. The first method, the straight line method, in this method, the same amount of money is lost each year for the asset's useful life. So let's highlight that. The same amount of money is lost each year. So in the in using the straight line method, we are going to be losing the same amount of money each year. So let's look at this question. A washing machine is bought for $80,000 and depreciates at a rate of 9% per year. Calculate the value of the machine after five years of normal use. And, and in this section here, we're going to use the straight line method. Since we are going to be losing 9% per year, we are going to calculate our 9%. So let's find our 9%. So 9 over 100 multiplied by $80,000. And dividing here gives us 9 times 800. And that gives us 0, 0, 0072. So we have in the first year or each year, the washing machine is going to lose $7,200 of its value for each year. Now we are talking about five years. So in five years' time, the machine is going to lose $7,200 every year. So that multiplied by five. Five to 10, five, seven, 35 on 136 there. So in five years' time, the machine is going to be losing $36,000 worth of its value. So what will be its value after the five years? That will be, we'll have to take the $80,000, which is, which is the original purchase value, and subtract that $36,000 from it. So in doing that, we end up with a four-year, three from 70 is four, we end up with um, $44,000. Let's just write that a little better. Forty-four thousand dollars so this would be the value of the washing machine after five years and this is using the linear or straight line method 
it loses the same amount of money each year. So this machine is losing $7,200 each year. And whatever the number of years is, you calculate it. So the method is simply this. You find the percentage, whatever the percentage is. You multiply it by the number of years. Get that sum, get that answer. And then you subtract from your initial purchase value that, that number that you got. And the answer there should be the value that it's worth after how many, wh whatever number of years that you're using. So find the percentage, multiply by the number of years, then subtract from the purchase price. And that's pretty much how the straight line method works in that you are losing the same amount of money each year for the product's useful life. Now, let's use the reducing balance method to find the value of the machine, same machine. Um, but in this one, we're using a formula. And here we say V equal P bracket 1 minus R over 100 to the N. The V here would be the value in future, whatever it is. The P is the purchase value. The 1 minus the rate over 100 to N, which is the number of years. So here we have it. And this is pretty much a calculator method. So just punching stuff in your calculator. So the value of the machine after five years is going to be $80,000 times 1 minus the rate. The rate is 9 over 100 to the number of years, which is 5. So in this method, remember, the, the, the same percentage is being lost each year. So the, here it's a bit different, not the same amount of money, but the same percentage is being lost. So every year it's going down by 9%. So it's based on the reducing balance. So we have $80,000 here. Multiplied by 1 minus 9 over 100 is 0 0.91. And we're going to raise that to the fifth power. And once you punch that into your calculator, you're going to get $49,000. $49,922.57 rounded off. So this would be the value after five years. Notice that you get two different answers. When you use the straight line method, you end up with $44,000. And when you use the Reducing balance method, you end up with $49,922.57. There are two different methods for calculating the same thing. CXE uses both of these methods. I am pretty sure that in accounts, they use the linear method. In the mathematics side, we tend to use this formula to work out the, um, to work out the value, of the, 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 the depreciation value. And I am pretty sure as well that on City and Guild's papers, they use the linear method as well. So you want to keep that in mind. There's another question that we want to look at. A car is bought for $70,000. In its first year, it loses 20% of its value. And in the second year, it loses 10% of its value. What is its value? A, after one year, and B, after two years. Now, this question is based on the reducing balance method but it does not use the same percentage per year. So notice that in the first year, it loses 20%, and in the second year, it loses 10%. So let's work out year one. <clears throat> in year one, it's going to lose 20% of its value, so let's do that. Let's find what 20% of its value is. That's $70,000. And we can divide that. And we have 7,000 times two. 7,000 times 2, that's 14,000. So the car would lose $14,000 worth of its value in the first year, which means that the value now of the car end of year 1 is going to be 70,000 minus 14,000, and that gives us 56 thousand dollars so that is the value of the car at the end of year one which means at the beginning of year two breaking out part b now b or let's let's um use the start of year two the car is going to be worth fifty six thousand dollars no, notice that it's going to lose 10% of its value now. So we need to find 10%, not of $70,000 because it's not worth $70,000 anymore. It's worth $56,000.
So we're going to find 10% of $56,000. We do that. And now we end up with $5,600. So the car is going to lose $5,600 off its value in the second year, which means that at the end of year two, um, at the end of year two, the car is going to be worth $56,000 minus $5,600. And doing that calculation, we end up with $50,000. $400. So this method is based on the reducing balance um, idea, but instead of using a single rate percentage, it's using different percentages for different years. This is how we go about calculating depreciation. Whether you're using the linear method, where it loses the same amount every year, whether you're using the reduced balance method, where it where it loses the same percentage every year, or whether you're going to use a system where it loses a different percentage for each year of its life of its usable life. Remember, you can find more past and practice questions on our website at the past and practice papers, past and pra practice paper section. Um, lots of multiple choice papers are there that are organized by topic. Same thing for paper two and three. Remember to subscribe. Remember to share with somebody who needs to learn this topic. Continue to learn, continue to grow in your studies, and thank you for watching.